This is our weekly update and we are attempting to do this remotely. So we will see how this works. Thank you for joining the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. Uh, I am here virtually with Jennifer Phillips Russo and we are gonna talk a little bit about how our business practices are changing and also how uh, potentially this will impact your business practices as we move into a state of um, partial partial or full shutdown, depending on which sector of the economy you are in. And we continue to socially distance ourselves to spread the, or to slow the spread of COVID-19. Um, and I want to turn it over to Jennifer so she can discuss some of the ways we are changing the way we do business. Thanks. So I hope you're all staying well. I just wanted to let you know that Kevin and I are still available, maybe not in person, but we're actually going to hold some virtual office hours for you. Starting next week, we have two separate days that we have saved just to meet you in this type of format. It's called Zoom. We sent out some crop updates that have number two videos in there that can actually show you how to do it, how to download it to your computer if you wanted to reach us that way. We're gonna have two hour blocks where we're just hanging out, waiting for you to ask questions while we're working on our educational programs from home. The first one is going to be Monday. We plan on having this available from 10 to 12 p.m. on Monday, and again on Thursday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We are not just available this way, though. You can call us at any time, and you can email us at any time during business hours, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So hopefully, if you have questions that are urgent or you wanted to speak with us in person, this will give you an avenue and ability to do that. Do you have anything you wanted to add to that, Kevin? Yeah, we obviously also still have email, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have an office phone, but we do still have our cell phones. Um, and on Wednesday at 2, two o'clock, uh, I will be doing a Facebook Live session. So Zoom has some real advantages in terms of connecting with people. We can, if you connect through Zoom, you can, you can use a telephone to call in and you'll be able to hear us and talk to us. If you use a computer or, uh, or even a smartphone that has the Zoom app, you'll be able to see us. And if you turn on your video, we'll be able to see you. So um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot more interaction that's available through Zoom, but we know that a lot of our growers uh, and certainly their spouses as well have access to Facebook. So if you're, if you're struggling um, to use something like Zoom and you just want to connect with Facebook, I'll be around to answer some business management questions Wednesday afternoon. Um, I assume if that's something you're interested in, you've probably already found our Clarel Facebook page, C-L-E-R-E-L. -E -E if you haven't, uh, check it out and um, I'll be around then. And if that turns out to be really popular, we will, we will work with that technology, even though it has a, it has a few downsides and we'll do more of that. So uh, we're not exactly sure how, this, how long this is gonna last, but the longer it lasts, the more we'll learn about the best ways to reach you and, and we'll keep adapting. And just to add to that, again, we are available email, Check our website because we will be updating that with not just what's going on with us, but what's happening around New York State and in Penn State for in regards to agriculture during this time too. So make sure you check the website, lergp.com. So Kevin, are you going to talk a little bit about um, COVID-19 and vineyard businesses? Yeah, so I think, yeah, like you touched on our business and how that's going to change a little bit and we'll see where it goes from here and there are going to be some other changes. But in terms of vineyard businesses, um, this is a lot of this content. If you saw it in the crop update, a whole you know 24 hours ago, um, is is similar to that. I wanted to base it on that, but it did also want to provide a few updates because this is a pretty fluid situation, and as things change rapidly, some of the some of the things in that crop update are already uh, a little bit dated. So um, we are seeing a couple of different factors and restrictions in daily life that are going to affect vineyard business. Um, one of those is gonna be international borders. So the, the, the sale of goods has not been restricted per se. Um, everybody recognizes the importance of getting essential goods. Uh, we have a, a global economy and we cannot shut it down without severely impacting just basic needs that we have. But the, the flow of those goods has already been slowed, it's been delayed. Uh, there are things happening in ports like um, uh, 
containment or, or uh, holding of goods while they inspect and while they clean. There are also um, work shortages in some of the ports, particularly in China, because of the restrictions. So uh, it takes longer to get containers unloaded and shipped out, mm -hmm. and the distribution there has been delayed. Uh, this has created a worldwide shortage of containers, and um, it looks like things right now are running four to five weeks behind. Um, so we expect those de delays to increase, and we expect that to have a potential to potentially have an impact on a supply chain that you rely on. Um, I don't know that we know enough to know what goods and what goods are going to be affected, um, but. You know, I think we'll find out and I think you should be cautious. So if you have access to certain things that are really important to you, um, you might wanna have a little bit in reserve. The other thing is we've already seen it directly affect international juice sales in a couple of different ways. Uh, juice getting stuck at borders. So that volume is probably going to decrease just because of those delays, at least in the short term. The, the other issue is uh, currency markets have been all over the place. So, so we know when our dollar is strong, for example, it's harder to export our goods. Um, currency markets, when we say we have a strong dollar, usually we're comparing that to a basket, what they call a basket of key currencies. Um, in this instance, we're comparing it to individual currencies because instead of moving in a, in a, um, a similar fashion, our, our val the value of our US dollar is moving in all different directions depending on which currency you're comparing it to, which is basically based on how COVID-19 is affecting those individual countries that hold those currencies. So for example, we've become a lot weaker against the Australian dollar and we've become a lot stronger against a number of other countries that were initially impacted worse than we, are, worse than we were. So, um, that currency market is complicated, and the good news, at least for juice, is that exports are not the largest part of our market. So that's going to create some larger headaches for other commodities, but still may um, put some pressure on, on the ability of our processors to export some of that juice. I have a question, Kevin, only because I've heard through different channels that um, people are just feeling free to call ag and markets. Do you feel like we should all funnel through us first? If they have any questions about our industry, definitely reach out to you or reach out to me and then we can find them the answer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also pay attention to a variety of, uh, of news sources. So there, Cornell will be putting out a lot of um, emails and um, even simply just paying attention to news in general uh, you know, as questions come up about what you can and can't do, uh, those things do change and rapidly evolve. I, th I think what I would say is the tendency of most states, even the most severe states, so right now the most severe state would probably be California. Um, you know, if you look into the nitty gritty details of what each individual is allowed to do, some states might be more severe in, in certain areas, but in general, California uh, just recently implemented the most severe restrictions. And even with that, uh, they still, of course, uh, I sh maybe I shouldn't say of course, but of course to me, recognize that food is an essential good and as bad as this gets, we're still gonna need things like food and medical care. So as we restrict businesses from being open and we restrict travel, um, in, a, in most states it looks like agriculture and the um, support of agriculture, so things related to agriculture, will be less or less affected by those restrictions. So they may still try to enforce and mandate or highly encourage things like social distancing, but they don't want to shut down the corn industry and then figure out how to feed us all in six months. Right. So pay attention to those issues in case there's a short-term requirement. Um, for the most part, though, um, in terms of, of um, even things like travel, uh, they, they're not necessarily restricting those activities. So if, for example, you need to get your car fixed in California, you can still get your car fixed. So you can still get parts. Um, 
one qu open question that has not necessarily been answered is international parts. Uh, so certainly I would, I would fall back to say that international, the flow of international goods is going to be slowed. Whether or not it will be restricted, I think, for parts could become an open question, especially when we do see, like when we do business with Canada, sometimes those parts are delivered directly by a provider who's going to, a dealer who's going to install those parts. Something like that could be impacted in the future. So hopefully we can make plans to avoid uh, that becoming too much of a problem. So I might be putting you on the spot here, and if I am, I apologize for that. And please, like we said, this is a fluid situation. Things are changing all the time. We don't always have the most up-to-date information. But for our growers and for our industry, what do you see as being the most impacted in their direct, what do I need to do now in my most recent vineyard practices? Um, so I think if you want to exercise best practices, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are probably growers out there that, that you know, don't necessarily um, have this type of routine in their in their daily schedule. They're not food processors. They're grape growers. So, you know, you you run out of the shop and you jump in the tractor and you go. But um, one thing I want to highlight is the CDC has a lot of recommendations for what you should be doing in terms of social distancing and sanitizing things. Um, just follow those because I think one key risk that our growers face is they tend to have one to two people as full-time workers or zero and, and they just have themselves. So you have a severe labor shortage if one person gets sick. So I think this jumps back to the idea that they're probably, I'd be highly surprised if they shut down a food supply. But if you can't work because you're sick or you have one employee who can't work because you're sick, it's not like a different industry where you know, they still have 96% of their workforce just because someone's out. Uh, you know, you, on average, I think most people, if they have one person taking a sick day, they're losing at least 30 to 50% of their available labor force. So that to me would be an easy risk management strategy, uh, you know, something like a little bleach and following those protocols. Uh, if, if it can save me two weeks of labor, you know, of a labor shortage, I, I would I would go at after that, even though it might seem a little silly to to a certain individual. It doesn't seem silly to me. Don't get me wrong, but uh, if it does seem silly to you, I, I would sort of dispel that thought and just just manage risk, even if even if you're a little skeptical of it. Oh, I agree. Good advice. Thank you. But yeah, like I said, I don't think they will be shutting down agriculture, and I don't think we know enough to know what goods will be short yet. So, um, you know, I think do what you can, try to identify what's really important to your operation. Um, you know, potash prices will go up in the next year unless this has a really short turnaround period. But, you know, I don't know how much they're gonna go up. I don't know that there will actually be a shortage. I just know based on the distribution channels that that fertilizer takes, I would, I would not be surprised at all if the price goes up. Um, you know, if you just put a bunch on, a lot of people just got really good deals on potash and it's been fairly inexpensive, relatively speaking, for the past six months. So, you know, you might be able to go two years without putting much on other than a maintenance application. And so I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy, you know, a stockpile of potash if that's the position you're in. Um, so, I think it's, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I think we don't know enough about right. which goods are going to be short. So you can't really just say, go out and buy toilet paper because we, you know, we figured that out. That's what we're going to be short on. And we, <laughs> in agriculture, we haven't figured out if there are going to be severe shortages, what they are yet. Okay. So just make sure you're social distance yourself and keep yourself safe and healthy. Yep. Don't touch your face like I just did. <laughs> I've been resisting the urge to do it this whole time. <laughs> yes. Um, so there are some macroeconomic concerns. Um, you know, I, th I think we had a really healthy economy even two months ago, and that was actually putting a hardship on some of the, some of the, you know, the labor shortages we were seeing, you know, it was not necessarily a good thing for grape growers. Um, what I don't, think we want is a severe supply side recession. 
that's going to be bad for grape growers and that's becoming a real possibility. Um, you know, this started out as a fairly simple uh, economic downturn. Uh, we, we saw a dramatic fall in stocks, you know, no big deal. Um, and bonds. Uh, there was a, a brief window of time where growers who had a lot of debt could potentially refinance that debt and it would help their business operations out. We may get another window in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but we have some indicators of more severe effects that could mean that this is at least a severe re recession or worse. Uh, and they're just okay. indicators and this is all happening really quickly. But basically what, what it means is we have some job reports numbers that are probably going to be pretty scary because we're basically telling people they can't work or they have to work from home. And for some people, that means they're still going to get paid. You know, there's some retail businesses out there that are going to continue to pay their workers, but there are a whole bunch that aren't. So, so unemployment rates, you know, they could be 10% or they could be 25%. Uh, so if they're 10%, I wouldn't get worried about anything. If they're 25%, you know, I think it's going to affect prices in the agricultural sector. Uh, the other thing that's sort of bad news for growers, and I, I started to talk about this a second ago, was that window of time that you could refinance your debt. So what happened was when the economy starts to do really terrible things, people move their money out of stocks and they move it into bonds, particularly uh, U.S. Treasuries, because that's the safest thing there is. And yields of U.S. Treasuries you know, they plummeted until March 9th. And what that means is the U.S. government had to pay a very low interest rate on their debt. And that was affecting other sectors of the debt market. So if you were borrowing money to buy land to expand your grape vineyard, or you already had a mortgage on your grape vineyard, you could refinance it. All those rates were falling to uh, literally record lows since we had a monetary system. They've never been this low, March 9th. And by March, probably actually by March 9th, um, that changed in the retail market. So if you were a farmer refinancing a mortgage, it suddenly became difficult. And by the 10th, uh, the same thing happened to U.S. Treasury. So even though stocks are a bad place to go, uh, the yields on bonds were increasing. And that happens for two reasons. It happens either because people are so afraid that they think the economy is going to be so bad that nobody's going to pay them back which is not good news. And I'm not saying I think that's what's gonna happen, but that's what the market is starting to price in, which is a little concerning. The other reason it happens is because the people who sell stocks and then transfer that money to bonds no longer have that money to do that. So the demand for the bonds goes down and the, and the yields that are paid have to go up to get buyers because there's a shortfall of cash in the market. So as the economy slows down, uh, liquidity disappears, which is basically a fancy way of saying people's money disappears. Uh, so they don't have it. So they can't buy bonds even if they want to. And that's probably what was happening. What we have been seeing, at least on the U.S. Treasury market, is the government makes an announcement. They basically say they're going to print more money. They're going to give it to, um, first they give it to banks, and then they started buying U.S. Treasuries, which is effectively printing money. So the Federal Reserve takes money that doesn't exist, they create it, and they buy bonds with it. And that decreases the price of the bond. And we see that uh, every time they make an announcement, the yield on treasuries goes back down. But that is not affecting the retail market. They're not buying mortgages. They're not buying other forms of bonds. So we're seeing uh, that become, at least relatively speaking, more expensive. Nothing crazy has happened yet. We've gone from three to 5%, depending on the type of land mortgage you have, to um, probably five to 7%. But the opportunity to refinance is basically gone because we've been below 7% on farm loans and below 5% on home loans for a long time. So if you got your loan anytime in the last six years or you refinanced it anytime in the last six years, it is now more expensive than it was when you got it. Um, so unfortunately, we cannot, we cannot refinance our debt. And also, unfortunately, this will mean that capital is probably tight. The availability of capital is tight for the foreseeable future, which means if you want to make an investment, if you want to take out a loan, it, it's 
a little bit difficult right now and it may continue to get more difficult. So I think just planning your, planning your business around the fact that debt may be harder to come by would be an important tool, important thing okay. to think about doing. Oof. And this, you know, this is all evolving really quickly in the same way that things could, things could reverse really quickly or get worse really quickly. I really don't think we know where we're going to be in September. Um, so don't panic people, right now. Right. I wouldn't panic. I would just be aware that if things go poorly, that this is a possibility. And this is something, if you have the ability to plan for it, you should. Wow, that was a lot of information. Thank you. <laughs> We've recorded I may have glassed over for a little bit. <laughs> you can watch it twice, or if you have questions, we do have open office hours. So maybe I can throw a lot of information at you and, and spur some questions. Um, and hopefully we can get this posted as soon as possible. Uh, we, uh, it is uh, Friday afternoon right now, so we're going to see what we can do to try to get this posted. We, we've never done one of these remotely, so we'll see how that goes. Want to thank you for joining us. We're, we are going to try to do this once a week, but we don't make any promises. We're going to be a little fluid about that. Um, and we're going to learn and figure out what the best way to do this is. So um, that is all I have for now. Do you have any other questions or comments, Jen? No, I just wanted to mention that, please, we are here for you. We're not closed. We're just working remotely. So we are available via email. Our cell phone numbers are out on the crop update that we sent out yesterday. So, and then please email us if you want to hear about anything or you have any questions and we can try to answer those for you. But everybody be safe out there. Yep. Oh, the other thing is we will try to pay a little bit closer attention to the Facebook page. So if, um, you know, if you're not an email person, if you're a Facebook person, if, if that's a thing for you, um, feel free to reach out that way. And we will, tr we will try to be a little bit more responsive than maybe we sometimes are. We could be a little bit closer to instantaneous on some of these responses because we don't have growers coming in and asking us questions because we're not there. So um, as we rely more on virtual things, we can also do a better job of, of maintaining our presence virtually uh, since we're not also doing any really physical presence work. So uh, thank you for all your information. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Jen, for helping me out with this. Hopefully uh, you kept things lighter than I did because I think I did maybe throw a little too much information at everybody, but um, this is the only way, you know, we can reach you now. So, so I guess we're going to have to get used to it. So thanks a lot. We'll see Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend.